I trained like Chris Herrera for 60 days straight. Before I started this routine back in 2020, this was how my abs looked like. I was skinny, so getting abs would be slightly easier for me since I just had to invest some time training for it. This is the result of my abs after adopting Chris Herrera's app routines and workouts. 92.7% of you guys aren't subscribed to me, so please hit that subscribe button. I upload calisthenics videos based on experience and research, so every bit of help from you guys count. I appreciate all of you who have subbed to me so far. On day 60, this was how I looked like. Chris has so many videos on his channel for app workouts and most of them follow the simple rule of 45 seconds of tension followed by 15 seconds of rest. But here's where I did it differently. After training like this every single day for just 2 weeks, my body got used to it and it was time to make things harder. Instead of sticking to 45 and 15, I decided to up it and empty. I stuck to 4 different exercises. The bicycle crunches, the flutter kicks, the leg raises, and the Russian twists. These four exercises were perfect to me because I could feel my lower and upper abs along with my lower back being engaged when I did them in my very own set. They allowed me to achieve the distinct V-line that I always wanted besides just having abs. I performed the set very differently from Chris. Most importantly, it was extremely intensive and therefore grew my abs quickly. Before I talk about it, I just want to give a shout out to these subscribers who have been there with me from the beginning and whom are supporting my journey. I stuck to a total of 2 minutes of tension and 3 minutes of rest. For each of my exercises, I did a total of 30 seconds of tension for all of them back to back, then I rested for a full duration of 3 minutes at the end. I found this a lot more painful and way more difficult but at the same time it got me abs a lot faster and made my overall core stronger as well. As soon as the timer hit the first 30 seconds, I would change to the next exercise which are the flutter kicks. After doing the ab workout this way for a long time, I was able to reduce my rest time in total from 3 minutes down to 2 minutes and I could still endure 2 full minutes of tension of the original set. I was conditioned to do a minimum of 3 full sets in the past. When I felt like I could do more, especially after the first month, I started to hit 5 sets every single day and my abs began to pop out even more. I also had to ensure that I had completed any form of strength training and reps and sets routines like muscle ups, pull ups or dips before I started this core routine because this routine would ultimately destroy me for the rest of the day. Speaking from experience, I would recommend everyone to start from 45 seconds of tension and 15 seconds of rest before attempting the set that I did. The set that I did requires a ton of basic core strength and a lot of endurance and definitely would not be easy to accomplish so take your time to get there. Occasionally, I would still possess quite a bit of strength even after completing this set 5 times so sometimes I would slip in an additional 30 seconds of a plank just to push out and kill my endurance. I recommend any of you watching this to give it a shot. While it may not give you abs if you don't have a low enough body fat, it can still strengthen your core tremendously and make you stronger overall. Now I'm going to show you how to not do these exercises wrongly because I made some of these mistakes when I first started off. When doing the bicycle crunches, make sure you are actively bringing your elbow to your knees and not the other way around. As you cycle with your legs, make sure you bring your knees as close to your torso as you possibly can to make it slightly easier for yourself. Also remember to extend your legs fully. Your elbows and knees need to have contact and you need to have tension in your abs throughout the course of this exercise. Crunch up slightly to allow for that to happen. For the flutter kicks, make sure that your legs are fully extended and your arms are not touching the floor. Keep your head up and focus your gaze at your legs. Ensure that your legs are not bent to properly engage your lower abs and also make sure that you are not resting your head on the floor. When doing leg raises, make sure that you raise your legs in a straight line until it forms a 90 degree angle with your torso. Speed is not as important as control is for this exercise so ensure that you raise your legs slowly and control the descent slowly as well. If you find leg raises too difficult, feel free to bend your knees to reduce the weight of your legs from the pivot. Russian twists are by far my favourite exercise since they are in charge of shaping the V-line and creating a gradient across the obliques. However, they are at the same time the most difficult exercise of the four. So I recommend doing this exercise first for most beginners. If you wish to challenge yourself, then do this last. 
for Russian twists, make sure your legs are off the floor and your hands are going from side to side and ensure that you are actively engaging your obliques when you twist from left to right. When you are doing the Russian twists, make sure you are twisting both your hands and your side abs. I cannot stress this enough, it's important to feel the obliques being engaged when you do this exercise. With that, I hope you guys learned something from this video. I will do my best to answer any form of inquiries that any of you have left in the comments section. I also upload videos every Monday and Wednesday for the time being so make sure you subscribe and turn on the bell to stay alert to notifications. I wish you guys the best in getting those thick shredded apps. Train hard y'all.